as we celebrate Mother's Day this morning and give tribute to honor all our mothers, let's just lift up our heart in prayer. My Father in heaven, we thank you, Father God, for your, for, for you. We celebrate our Father in heaven and we thank you, Father, for your plan and purpose for all of us this morning as we uh, give thanks to God for motherhood and for mothers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So actually I feel good within me, though I do have some mixed feelings to bring mother's message this morning. And I've titled it, Because You Are, I Am. And you'll see three faces there. One is of my mother, one of my mother-in-law, and the other of Auntie Anne, um, who was a tremendous influence in our lives, in our spiritual walk, in our younger days. And I want to bless God uh, for the memory of all three of them who have gone to be with the Lord. So, uh, and I've titled it Because You Are, I Am. And uh, the words of our text uh, come from a great love story in the Bible through the scriptures that we heard over and over again during the past uh, four Sundays or so. And uh, it reads Ruth 1.16. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. And as their story un unfolds, in, in the days when the judges ruled in Israel, there came a famine in the land. You heard this background a couple of times um, in the past uh, few weeks. I've got to try to get a picture of uh, what it would have been like uh, in that uh, time period. And because the famine was so severe, out of a felt need for the survival of his family, this well-to-do man from Bethlehem, his name was Elimelech, with his wife Naomi and their two boys, left their home city, Judah, and traveled to the highlands of Moab, one of their neighboring nations, uh, to think, wanting to escape the effects of the famine. I got uh, mapped out there. Yes, so that's how they traveled from Judah up to Moab. Uh, while living in Moab, Moab was an idol-worshipping country. Uh, it happened naturally. Uh, their sons married Moabite women. Uh, their race, the Moabites, they descended from Abraham's nephew Lot, but they were under a hex or a curse, and Israel had no dealings with them. And then, as the years passed, we find, the script, we learned it over the weeks, that Naomi lost her husband and eventually her two sons in Moab in that foreign country. And because the famine, uh, many families may have loved their li loved ones, especially wives may have lost their husbands who they had to work very hard and trying to eke out an existence. So, uh, it's a lesson as I was meditating, uh, let's take to heart not to be leered uh, into the wrong place, however attractive and glamorous the place seems from afar. Let's take care. We need to draw out some lessons for ourselves, forget the incidents, but draw the lessons that we, it may equip us in our journey with our God. And it wasn't easy uh, for a widow in the ancient world. Widows were taken advantage of or ignored. They were almost always stricken with living in poverty. Though God's law provided that the nearest relative of the widow should care for the widow. But now living in this foreign country of Moab, far away from their home city, Naomi had no relatives nearby. Uh, and uh, she really wasn't aware, I think, if any of her relatives in Judah were still alive. Be wondering whether they survived the effect of that, uh, that uh, very st strong famine 
you know, with left nothing for people to exist. So Naomi wasn't sure. She had no relatives here, no relatives. She wasn't aware who was left behind, who survived. And added to Naomi's sorrow, the burden of her sorrow was that she lost her husband. Um, those of you whose husband has passed away, I know you will share with me. I personally, my mother, when she lost her husband, I know when my father went to be with the Lord, I know how much it, uh, it uh, impacted her life. So, the, and beyond, besides losing a husband, one of the worst griefs a mother could ever imagine is to outlive her own children. And that, uh, and that was Naomi's situation. So, the, this morning, let's pause uh, on this Mother's Day to encourage all those mothers in their time who have lost sons or children to violence, or in service to our country. And we especially remember our Auntie Marianne, Romy's mother, uh, who lost her son, Shiranta, while in national service. We must keep these things in mind, uh, that there are mothers who sacrifice their sons uh, so that we may have more secure lives. Uh, we also a child lost to, due to sudden illness or terminal illness, like our Auntie Kamalini, that is Jehan's mother, Jehan Perimpanagam's mother. Uh, just like Naomi, uh, these mothers never expected to outlive their children. Yet it is to Naomi's credit that through the loss of her husband and sons, she did not allow her grief and sorrow to turn her away from her worship and faith in the Almighty God. A lesson that we can uh, take for ourselves that she kept her faith going. Great sorrow, great grief, irrepressible, but yet she keeps her faith going. And both her daughters-in-law, Ruth and Orpha, were a witness to her strength under tears. Even as they themselves also would subsequently lose their husbands, Ruth and Orpha, the two daughters-in-law, were now the only family Naomi is left with. These three wives, now widowed, they would have grieved, yet comforted each other at their loss. All three were on the same page. Different years, but different ages, but at the same page. Years go by, and after 10 years, Naomi hears, she hears some good news. I don't know whether it was good news at first for her, that the famine had lifted in her home country, Judah. And we can see she took a decision. Seemingly with faith, she needed faith. It was a risk she's taking. Now she's settled here. Her daughters-in-law are from this part of the world, from that part of the world. But yet she takes a decision, not knowing what awaited her over there in Judah. Naomi decided to leave Moab and go back to Judah with Ruth and Orpha initially. So it's also a lesson for us that is never too late to correct some mistaken decisions of the past. Brothers and sisters, let's take to heart. We don't have to keep going in the same wrong direction. There comes a time when we can do a take a do a turnaround and decide to get back to where we ought to be. So on their way back to Judah, Naomi has second thoughts. And she encourages Ruth and offer her two daughters-in-law to remain with their own people, even against her own desire for companionship. Naomi questions within herself, was it right for these two young women to forsake their families, friends, for an uncertain future ahead of them. She wonders, what chance would they have as widows and strangers in Bethlehem? And uh, though these two girls were the only precious people who were so much a part of Naomi's happy memories, happy times with her family, husband, and the two boys. And even in that desperate situation, we find 
that Naomi carries a selfless attitude and she is willing to release the girls back home to their own people. And we find Naomi prevails on them to go back to their mother's homes and she prays over them. Uh, and she prays like this, Ruth 1, 8 and 9, if I may please have the scriptures up. And she says, may the Lord show kindness to you. Shall we all pray that prayer? May the Lord show kindness to you as you have shown to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. That was her prayer for over these two girls. And we can only imagine uh, that in saying their farewells, it was, would have been a very emotionally charged situation. The women would have embraced each other, tears streaming down their cheeks. While both the younger widows begged Naomi, they said, Mama, don't send us back. They both said like that, Mama, don't send us back. But Naomi, a, a strong-willed woman, she is insisting on, and at Naomi's insistence, offer eventually, one of the daughters-in-law eventually turns back home to Moab. But you find Ruth clinging to Naomi, pledging her loyalty. Naomi say, Mama, don't, don't, I'm going to be with you. And she is pledging her loyalty. Ruth 1, 16 to 17. And she says, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from following you. And the famous scripture, wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And very importantly, your God, my God. It's ev evident. We can, uh, we can uh, discern that Naomi had a profound mothering influence on the life of Ruth. Naomi, though lo she lost both her sons, now she is bonded with Ruth and Orpha as her own daughters. They may have been the daughters she never had. She had only boys. So the joy of having two daughters because her attitude, her perspective was so different and changed. And in Ruth 1, 11 to 13, Naomi refers to them three times as her daughters. In Naomi's heart, they were her own daughters. Brothers and sisters, though the focus of this short book uh, titled Ruth in the scriptures, it's titled Ruth, uh, but actually Ruth became who she was because of Naomi. Because of Naomi, Ruth walked into a different dimension in life. So we said, because you are, I am. May I have that slide? Because you are, I am. Upon reflection, most of us this morning would say it was the influence of a grandmother or a mother or a woman whom God placed in our lives like Naomi who in many ways has shaped the person who we have become. As we just silently reflect, remember we have been shaped up by someone else. Some would not be who they are without that hand that rocked the cradle. Some would not be who they are without that voice that soothed their fears, wiped away tears, picked them up, when they were down, corrected when in error, or when took wrong decisions, the voice was there to help to turn, take, make a turnaround. Mothers handed down to us their faith and values that with God all things are possible. Mothers who loved us unconditionally. Because of the relationship Naomi had with Ruth, Ruth became who she was. We often lose sight of Naomi's role in Ruth's life. Moving on, when her husband and sons died, Naomi became the head of her household. As the matriarch, uh, 
even before they decided to leave for Judah, both Orpha and Ruth lived with her and they would have been impacted by Naomi's influence. They heard her pray. They saw how she worshipped the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob even in a foreign land full of idol worship and all manner of uh, idolatrous beliefs, witchcraft, all manner of um, seducing spirits. Here was this one woman keeping her faith. The two daughters-in-law witnessed how she made ends meet, tried to provide a caring home even in the midst of a famine which may have impacted Moab also in certain ways. Naomi had endured severe hardship, but her faith in God birthed a growing faith in Ruth. It was not just a mere confession, a one-time confession, but a growing faith. Ruth is growing in her faith. And Ruth 1, 16 to 17, wherever you go, Ruth confesses, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God. Though a Moabite and a widow, going into this foreign land of Judah, Ruth now was willing to remember, give up her own religious system. She was willing to give up the possibility of marriage and having children. Her one goal was to take care of of Naomi. That was what was uppermost in her. Naomi needed Ruth as much as Ruth needed Naomi. Their relationship was strengthened by a mutual love for each other. It was give and take. When we, brothers and sisters, when we look back and understand or have some idea of the struggles that our mothers or the women who raised us up, faced up to, so that we are who we are. It's appropriate to reflect on their lives and remind ourselves of the challenges they faced as younger mothers at home and at the workplace. The temptations they would have had to go through. Whatever challenges they faced, remember, it was not all the bed of roses for them. So they walked through a difficult journey themselves. They may have faltered, but brought us through to where we are this morning. So it's appropriate to honor them all the days of their life before they pass on to be with the Lord. Otherwise, we will mainly have to live with regrets, saying, I should have done this and I should have done that. Just out of my own life, my mother, uh, she, you know, when we were, went into ministry and we began in the village of Gonabala Kalania, and uh, we were living in a hut. I have asked for a picture of that there. We lived in that hut without any exaggeration. For those of you who have come newly to this family of God, we lived in that hut. And that little structure in front was my kitchen. And, and when we were there, first initially it was just the two of us and our daughter, she would have been uh, three, four years. And then we had our foster daughter, uh, Tilini's mother, Purini. And it was just the four of us. But suddenly, Many other young people said, we want to come and serve the Lord with you. And they joined us in the ministry. And they also came to live in this little place. It just had two rooms. And when these people came, Brother Lalit moved out, out of the, that little structure. And you know, it, in our, it's not nice. To have lots of young people, we were also young. So my mother, she volunteered and she willingly came to live in that hut. All I could offer her to sleep on was a camp cot, you know, in common parlance, a buru and the. Actually, she lived, slept on a buru and the. And that was the only thing we both could provide her with. And she was happy to 
stay with us. She is devoted to this mission that she took upon her life as a widow. Moving on, and Ruth's determination to go where Naomi went was in honor how Naomi had blessed her life. The loyalty that Ruth demonstrated to Naomi was the kind of value she placed on Naomi being a mother to her. Ruth picked up the value of a mother and she decided I'm going to honor her and I'm going to be loyal and I'm going to pledge my life to nurture this older woman now. And as we celebrate Mother's Day, let's see who is our Naomi this morning. Is it our biological mother? Is it a grandmother? Is it an aunt? Is it a stepmother? Or is there a foster mother? Or maybe uh, many women played these different roles in our lives. <coughs> but without a shadow of doubt, we can say, because you are, I am. That's something we can all confess. Because of the life you lived, the love you showed, my life has been made all the better, all the richer, all the more meaningful. My mother, speaking of my mother, being Mother's Day, she imparted prayer and intercessions to me. When I awoke, Later on in years, when I, we were living in Visaka Road, and whenever, every morning, each morning I awoke, she was up before me, and I heard a quiet voice of prayer. And when I went to sleep, the last thing I heard was a praying voice. Actually, brothers and sisters, it's her legacy that I am left with, the voice of prayer. And the breath of the Holy Spirit that came over me, Whenever I lift up my heart in prayer and say, my father, that's the spiritual genome I received from her. And that spirit of prayer, the voice of prayer, has never left me. I caught that spirit of prayer from my mother. So when we read the full text of the book of Ruth, Naomi in many ways paved the way for Ruth. Paved the way through her faith. Paved the way with a decision to return to Judah. Paved the way by introducing Ruth to Boaz, her relative of uh, Naomi's diseased husband. Dear brothers and sisters, to go forward, we must, like Naomi, abandon the bitterness of yesterday. Maybe you see these things, slides, that uh, Thirini made for me from, the, from what I gave her. So it's, it's time to decide to abandon the bitterness of yesterday. We will not be a blessed woman like Naomi, older mothers, if we hang on to the old bitterness, the old pains, the old memories, those ghosts from the past, if we keep on ruminating on those things, we will not be blessed women not be a blessed woman. We would not be a way maker for our Ruth. So let's decide this morning that we would abandon the bitterness of yesterday. And I, I pray that the Naomi in you will arise because you will arise to make way for a, another woman to be a woman of honor. Actually, some years back, we were having a family camp at that time in the camp. And there was a prophet who had come over from UK, I think. And I was seated on a side. It was a difficult time for us in the church. And I thought, oh, I'm, I'm a failure. I do, my husband never thinks like that. But oft times, I think. I said, I thought, I'm a failure. And I was seated on the side of the stage at the camp. And I thought, what's this? What have I left with? What am I left with? And I was thinking it's better for me to retire. These are my honest thoughts I'm sharing with you. And when I was thinking thoughts like this, this man of God, he turns to me and he says, Hiranti, you will not retire. You will die in your boots. So there am I, refired into God's ministry again. So Naomi 
You are. So let the Naomi in you arise. Yes, Naomi. I want to speak to the Naomi's. You are the sweet and pleasant one. You are not a Mara. Though Naomi went to Judah and she said, don't call me Naomi, call me Mara. You see, she was thinking she's a failure. But her name never changed. Naomi means sweet and pleasant one. Mainly because someone has thrown words at you, don't call yourself Mara. Don't call yourself Mara by looking at your present circumstances. May have gone, in the eyes of the world, bad to worse. But your name, your identity, your worth, your significance does not change in his eyes. Merely because of the external circumstances like loss, death, loneliness, humiliation, hex of death. You see, because of any of these circumstances, your significance in the Father's presence never changes. So let's not go back, let's not go back to the predictable. Let's not think like the way the world thinks to what was always done. But with the knowledge of the Lord comes hope and comes the ability to a sense to navigate our way forward comes to us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. And to all the Naomi's here this morning, the younger Naomi's, the Naomi's to be, mothers to be, we have a couple of them this season in the church family, oh, to all of them. Your take home would be what you do in the day-to-day -day routine is what will be imprinted in the spirit of your root, in the spirit of your next generation. Your devotion to the Lord is what your root will emulate. See how God works in blessing the faithfulness of mothers who worship him in the midst of having made tremendous personal sacrifices. By honoring her mother-in-law, I'm almost at the end. Uh, I've asked uh, Tushi to please help me with the prayer time. Please come up. Yes, and the worship team as well. And by honoring her mother-in-law and the God who Naomi worshipped, it led Ruth into God's plan. What Ruth sowed, she reaped abundance, abundance. She reaped an abundance. It led Ruth to meeting Boaz, the man who would become her second husband and the father of her son. It led Ruth to a relationship with God and with a loving family on earth. It led Ruth to being in the lineage of King David, Ruth being David's grandmother. And the most important thing, it even led Ruth to be in the lineage of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Messiah. You can read Matthew 1, 5 or 15, I forget the scripture, but her name is there in the lineage. Never forgotten, forever alive, because the word of God is settled in heaven forever. And Ruth is certainly a beautiful example of the biblical principle of honoring mothers. Young people, please hear me this morning. Remember Jesus, our role model. Remember Jesus, he never forgot, he did not forget to make provision for his earthly mother. And he said at the cross, one of the last things he did, his earthly mother, he never forgot that he was brought into this world uh, through this mother. And, uh, and, he, and he's in John 19, 26 and 27, you'll see the scripture up there. And he said, woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother to John the disciple, bringing forth the new family in God, the spiritual family. He never forgot her. And the scripture says when Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home, bringing forth the new family in Christ. It's like an illustration of the church family. 
a new family in Christ, goes beyond the boundaries of biological families. And that's the new family, the church family in Christ Jesus. So may we all this Mother's Day, you may not be a biological mother, but, mother, but dear sister, your influence and impact would have been tremendous upon so many generations of young people who, walk, who went through your heads. So take heart, your significance, your value, your worth, it cannot be measured in this world. One day when we get into, get come before into the presence of the Lord, wherever you are working, wherever your hands, whatever labor you have to do, in the presence of the Lord, when the, when the books are unfolded, you'll be amazed. Did, did, did God take notice of this little thing? Did he take notice of the little cup of water I gave to a woman walking by? Did, did God take notice of this cup of tea I made for a child without a mother? It will be amazing. So brothers and sisters, the spirit of Naomi, let it arise in every one of you. May, may not be a mother, but let it arise. Take care. Of the, take notice of those who are less fortunate than us so that you impact, so that your boundaries expand, your vision expands, your horizon is greater. And see how we can grow to be like our Lord Jesus. Every day as we honor our parents, as we honor those who have impacted our lives and as we, as we take out of their lives. St. Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. Out of their lives, what is it that we can take for ourselves? Let's have a time of not only hear this message and go home, but some take homes for us, some ac action that we are going to take. You may be in the role of a Naomi or a Ruth, matters not. Fathers, husbands and sons, matters not. But some action that we need to take because faith without works is dead. Faith with works is alive, changes things, changes situations. So let's have a faith that is active, alert and aware. And the Lord empower us to move on from faith to faith, glory to glory, till we see our Lord Jesus Christ on the day of his return. Come, Tili, come, uh, Tushi. I want you to lift up your heart in prayer. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Lord, we come before you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this house of God where we can all come, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, especially, Lord, as we remember, Lord, every single mother in our midst, Father. Lord, every mother figure, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our biological mothers, Lord, for our spiritual mothers, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for every lady, Father. Lord, for the Naomi's and the Ruth's, Father. Lord, we want to take time, Lord, to appreciate every single mother, Lord. We know, Lord, that motherhood is a gift from you, Lord, and you have created every woman, Lord, with that part of you, Lord, to love, to nurture, to care, to feed, Lord. Lord, to build up, Lord. Lord, you have given those qualities, Lord. Lord, to every single lady here, Father. Lord, and we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for every single sacrifice, Lord. Lord, from the time, Lord, the baby is conceived, Lord. Lord, you see, Lord, even in the womb, Lord, how you form mothers, Father. Lord, Lord, biological children, Lord, spiritual children, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for every mother, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for 
for that heart, Lord, your heart that you have put in every mother, Lord. And we want to remember, Lord, and say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for every sacrifice, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all the godly heritage, Lord, that the mother passes on to her children, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for every spiritual mother here, every mother in our midst, Lord, who has been an example, Father, Lord, who has persevered, Lord, through difficulty, Lord, Lord, who has endured, Father, who has kept the faith, Lord, we remember those who have lost their children, their husbands, Father, Lord, those mothers as well who have persevered, Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the mothers who keep the home, Father, Lord, for the mothers who Wake up early, Lord, who go to bed late at night, Father. Lord, providing, protecting. Thank you, Lord, for that godly inheritance, Father. Lord, for the mothers, Lord, who teach their children, Lord, the importance of loving and knowing you, Father. We thank you and we bless every mother, Lord. We bless every mother, Lord, who has chosen, Lord. Lord, to put you first in her life, Lord, and to pass that legacy on to her children, Lord. We bless you, Father. Lord, with one heart, we join and bless you, Lord, for every mother, Lord, who has shown us, Lord, Lord, that there is nothing more worth, Lord, than clinging on to the truth of the gospel, Lord, of loving you first, Lord, of sitting at your feet first, Father, and Lord, Lord, doing everything else, Lord, to show us the way, Lord. Lord, to ensure, Lord, Lord, that they pray for us, Lord, in our difficult times, Father. Lord, we pray, Lord, for, Lord, some relationships between mothers and children, Lord, that may not have been perfect, Lord, but we choose to remember the memory of their mothers and bless them, Father. Lord, those who have maybe painful memories, Lord, Lord, that you will, Lord Jesus, heal, Lord. Heal those relationships, Lord. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for those daughters who are who they are because of their mothers, Lord, because of the prayers, Lord, of those ladies, Lord, who, Lord, prayed and nurtured them, Lord, Lord, who wept into the nights, Father, Lord, who, Lord, Lord, came before you, Lord, day and night on behalf of their children, Lord, Lord, because, Lord, of those prayers, Lord, because of that faith, Lord, you have raised many sons and daughters who worship you, Lord, who lift your name on high, Lord, who make an impact in this world, Lord, because of their love and sacrifices, Lord, Lord, the spiritual mothers, Lord, Lord, the biological mothers, we thank you, Lord, for their teaching, for their sacrifice, Father, Lord, that, Lord, sometimes, Lord, they chose, Lord, to, Lord, Lord, endure the pain, Lord, to go through that difficulty, Father, Lord, so so that another generation will know you, Lord. That another generation will serve you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for the sacrifices of these women. And, Lord, we remember them with gratitude, Father. And we pray a blessing, Lord, for everyone who laid down their lives, Lord. Laid down, Lord, whatever seemed, Lord, attractive, Lord, for the sake of the cause of Christ and the sake of building his kingdom, Lord. Lord, so that another person, another generation could rise up, Lord. We know, Lord, that Ruth is known because of Naomi's faith, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that she didn't give up, Lord. That she lived, Lord, every day, Lord, with consistency, worshipping you, Father. So we thank you, Lord, and we remember, Lord, that because of their faith, Lord, because you gave them that faith and they passed it on, we are who we are. And we pray for strength, Lord, to new minds others, Lord, to take on, Lord, from this legacy, Lord, of the generation that is before us, Lord. Lord, that we will love and serve those mothers in their elder years, Father. Lord, the mothers who are weak with physical strength, Father, but who are so strong in the spirit, I pray that we will honor those mothers, Lord, who, Lord, have now, Lord, only their spirits that are strong, but their flesh is Lord, maybe not that strong. We bless them, Father, and we pray that you will help, Lord, the children to take care of those mothers, Father, to love them, to nurture them, to give them the companionship they need, Father, and to learn, Lord, the lessons from those mothers, Lord, to pass it on to the next generation, to be those mothers, Lord, that you have created each and every one to be. We thank you, Father, in your precious name. Amen.